Okay, in this problem, I want to take another look at an example of the moment of inertia of a composite body. And this composite body is going to be a pendulum. So I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to have two thin rods, and this, this uh, rod right here is going to be uh, rod OA. In my second thin rod, uh, it's going to be connected to this. It's going to be this rod right here, and it's going to be uh, rod BC. So B, oops, I think that's off the screen. I'll just re redraw this and make sure everything is clear. So this is BC. And I'm giving lengths of each of these, uh, each of these rods. This length right here is going to be two feet. And the length of rod BC is going to be 1.5 feet. And this is directly in the middle. So this right here is uh, 0.75 feet. Now I'm also given the weight of both these rods. I'm given that uh, rod OA is going to weigh 10 pounds. And rod BC is going to weigh 8 pounds. And now I want to determine the moment of inertia of this pendulum about this pa axis passing through this point O. And this point O is pointing out of your screen towards you. And the pendulum is, you know, free to spin like this. So how do we figure that out? Well, if we look in the back of a book and a table of the moment of inertias, we're not going to find uh, we're not going to find an equation probably that that deals with this specific geometry we have here. We're, we're going to have moments of inertia about different axes of a long rod, but we're not going to have this pendulum. So we're going to have to use the method of composite bodies again. And we know that the moment of inertia of a total system is going to be equal to the the sum of all the moments of inertia of a system of each part of that system so plus the distance to the axis we're trying to uh, find so this right here is actually just the parallel axis theorem and the parallel axis theorem says that if we know the moment of inertia about the center of mass of, of some object we can figure out the moment of inertia about any parallel axis uh, by just modifying modifying the equation with this md squared, where d is the distance to the, the parallel axis that we're looking at. And if we add all these up, or subtract them, or whatever we're doing, we can figure out the moment of inertia of a system. So if we if we decide to look at this this uh, OA so this right here and this is O and this is A and we add this to the moment of inertia of this BC we're going to get the total moment of inertia of everything that we're looking at and so I like to call this uh, part A and part B so let's look at part A, which is this rod uh, OA. And don't forget, we're taking the moment of inertia about this point uh, right here. So if we look at OA, uh, we need to figure out what the moment of inertia about point O is. And if we look at a table, it, this is actually taken care of for us. We know that the moment of inertia of a rod about uh, about on one end, which would be point O for us, is given to us as one third ML squared. Now, 
I'm going to use this equation. However, if you didn't like this, you could find the moment of inertia about the center of mass and use the parallel axis theorem to figure out the moment of inertia about this point O and this would be your distance D. And you get the same answer, but if I use this, I get one third times my mass. And my mass of my mass of this bar OA is going to be 10 over G or 10 over 32.2 uh, feet per second squared. And the total length of this bar, which is two feet. And this gives me a moment of inertia of bar A about 0 0.0, which is equal to 0.414 slug, slugs times feet squared. Uh, simple enough. So now look, let's look at the moment of inertia of this part B. Well, this isn't as simple as this one, but it's not too hard. We take, using the parallel axis theorem, we can figure out the moment of inertia through the center of mass. And we know the center of mass is directly lined up with, uh, with this point O that we're looking for. So if we go to a back of a book, back, look at a table of moment of inertia, we're going to find that the moment of inertia about a center of this long rod is going to be uh, this is BC is going to be equal to 1 12th ml squared and this is about the center this this G right here is going to be about this center point right here so we're going to get 1 12th times this 8 over G times L. This total length is 1.5 squared. All right. So now, um, if we look at the parallel axis theorem, we found the moment of inertia about this point G, but we're actually interested in the moment of inertia about point O. So if we modify this equation and we say the moment of inertia about point O we just have to add this MD squared so it's going to be plus the mass which is we know is 8 over G times this distance squared and this distance is from here all the way to here and we were told that that's two feet. So this right here is going to be uh, two feet squared. And if we calculate this entire, uh, this entire equation out, we're going to get it's equal to 1.04 uh, slug time feet squared. That's great. But we said that the moment of inertia of the system we're looking about looking at about point O is going to be equal to this moment of inertia of A plus the moment of inertia of B. So we're going to have the moment of inertia about point O is going to be equal to 0.414 plus 1.04. And this is going to be equal to 1.45. Slug feet squared.